From the Opal Lawrence Historical Park to Escape Adventures, there is so much to do and see in Mesquite, Texas. And here on Odysseys with Love, Wandering in DFW, I will be sharing my family's favorite things to do in my hometown of Mesquite, Texas. Hey everyone, it's Megan with Odysseys with Love, and as a Mesquite local for the past 33 years, I have a little bit of insight on everything there is to do in our hometown that I grew up in. First, I wanted to talk about all the different historical locations, as that is one of my favorite things about Mesquite and our history. If you love Old Western vibes, Mesquite is sure to please you with our history and flavor. Our first stop is at Opal Lawrence Historical Park, which was featured on our blog, which you can visit in the link in the description of this episode. And as everyone knows, every little city has its own urban legends and Mesquite is no different with this. Growing up, I always heard about Frank and Jesse James visiting the Opal Lawrence home and even using the tower section as a lookout and then left the Lawrence family a white horse as a gift. But I do have to say that the Lawrence family does dispute this. The historical park is located near Old Mesquite at 701 East Kearney Street. Several others, homes and buildings have been restored and are currently being restored to their former glory. The park is open from Tuesday through Friday from 10.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. The next stop on this list is the Florence Ranch Homestead, located on the opposite side of Mesquite. The first part of this ranch house was built in 1871 or 72 by David and Julia Savannah Florence. Florence Ranch was also established two years before the township of Mesquite and the ranch was known as Meadowview Farm. So this is how my neighborhood got its name and it is open Thursday and Friday from 10.30 to 3.30 and is great for educational trips with children. Historic Mesquite Inc. has a wonderful list of all of Mesquite historical sites and some of those are Texas State historical markers. This list includes Brickyard Cemetery, City of Mesquite, Sam Bass Train Robbery, First Methodist Church of Mesquite, Florence Ranch Homestead, Galloway Farmstead, Lawrence Farmstead, Mesquite Cemetery Marker, Motley Cemetery, Potter Cemetery, Public Education of Mesquite, First Presbyterian Church of Mesquite, and a Holly McWhorter Green Hall family. But we cannot forget the nearby community's historical markers that affect Mesquite, including Galloway's Old Family Place, La Prada Drive Church of Christ, First Baptist Church of Sunnyvale, Long Creek Cemetery, and Tripp Baptist Church. I am leaving a link in the description of this episode to the city's list and addresses for this. Let's change things up a little bit and talk about the different parks and recreation that is available in Mesquite. I will be dedicating a blog post to each of the different parks that are available along with pictures and our thoughts on them, but since there are 50 plus parks throughout Mesquite, I really can't do much justice here to the Parks and Rec Services. Now, my family's favorite parks include Beasley Park, since it is right around the corner from my home, Palos Verdes Lake Park, the Duck Pond near Porter Elementary, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, City Lake Park, Kids Quest, and Westlake Park. Even with 50 plus parks, we have not been able to visit all of them as of yet. And I know of two on the list that are Florence Ranch Homestead and Opal Lawrence Historical Park. Another thing to know about these parks is some of them include facilities that are for rent, including Westlake House, Lakeside Activity Center, and Lakeside Park. Switching things again, and we have our action and adventure options. Mesquite has a teenage version of Chuck E. Cheese called Celebration Station that has batting cages, go-karts, bumper boats, mini golf, arcade, and laser tag. And we have recently had Getty's Pizza move in. Then we also have Devil's Bold Speedway, which is a dirt track half mile. Head back into Central Mesquite, and we have the Mesquite Championship Rodeo. The rodeo posted their summer schedule starting June 1st featuring Mark Chestnut. But one thing we have not experienced yet is Escape Adventures, Mesquite's own escape room, with four different options, including The Mission, Dr. Gene Eddix, Steampunk 2.0, and Captain Scully. I'm sure with James's love of Steampunk that we will have to choose to do the Steampunk one. Their description of this escape room is, you're very wealthy and eccentric great-great-great-aunt Val Valerian has left her $27 million to any relative who is witty enough to solve a series of clues, puzzles, and gadgets. 
built by Nikola Tesla himself. She died July 27th, 1914, and four generations have failed the test. Now it's your family's turn to earn the money. Can you successfully acquire her last will and testament? Or will you leave empty-handed like the generations before? This seems like a lot of fun that myself and James would enjoy. Since this is the first of our Mesquite Travel Guide, we will be featuring here in the near future different restaurants located in Mesquite as we have had several of them from mom and pop diners to chain restaurants like Red Lobster and Razoo's. Then we have different shopping locations including Townie Small and Downtown Mesquite with a few shops, but as that location is ever growing, we will be sharing more here soon. We don't have a lot of hotels and nothing too fancy, but we have some nice ones for those wanting a night away from kids and those visiting. The City of Mesquite has two theaters, AMC 10 and 30. The AMC 10 is our dollar theater and is great for a quick outing, and 30 is the bigger theater that plays recent releases. I grew up heading to AMC 10 when it was Starplex to be dropped off and hang out with friends as a teen. We also have two skating rinks, one which was my first job, golf clubs, and more. I wanted to end this on a little more history as it's one of my favorite places to take my own photography clients, but it deserves a little more talk about its history and hopefully one day someone will bring it back to its glory, but Samuel's Farm. As you pull into the parking lot of this historical little park, you are greeted by a large tractor. After finding a parking space that is never any problem, don't head towards the house in the visitor center as that has been closed for years. There is a gate over on the left side of the building. Head on in and you will find a few different walking paths and a decent sized playground. But you will also see a big red barn that has always been a favorite with photography clients. A older horse barn that seems to be wasting away and a home that is blocked off and a few fishing ponds. Back when I was a child, this was an educational facility that schools and families would go to learn about farm life. There was also horseback riding at one point on the property, but all of this is gone now. I do have to say that this park is not technically mesquite as it is owned by Dallas, and there is some old tale behind that. See, Samuel's farm was owned by Dr. William Samuel and was gifted to the city of Dallas in his will when he died in 1937. The words in the will have started a 70 plus year long battle. Real estate is city Dallas park board for park purposes, not to be sold to park board as permanent foundation. When the city receives this, it made Dallas one of the richest park systems in the country at the time. What makes me want to cry is this park land should be worth $250 million today, but it's worth less than when Dr. Samuel died at only $5.6 million. There is a lot of history and information on this at D Magazine, which I will link in the description below, that was published back in August 2009. I hope you enjoyed today's episode here on Odysseys with Love. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a share with your family and friends. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and more. Just take a look down in the description of this episode to find out more.